think by New Hampshire state law, I have to tell you that it's being recorded. So anyways, um, I appreciate everyone hopping in here. Uh, I'm definitely excited to share this stuff with you because I, I feel like as soon as I created some of this stuff here with my team, I was like, why didn't we do this sooner? And how can we do this more regularly? Um, before diving in, I'm going to introduce Matt, who is, if, if any of you guys don't know Aerial Canvas, Matt Wood is, uh, he's the sit-in CEO or mainly the, the whole CEO of, uh, that company right now. Um, but they've, uh, they're, you know, I think a lot of people in this industry who do know them aspire to, you know, follow their footsteps. I mean, they're arguably probably one of the, if not the biggest, um, real estate marketing company in the country. So. Small round of applause. I pick Matt's brain all, uh, he's pretty close to it, right? I mean, 60, 70 employees, so. Yeah, without employing contractors, I think that we're, you know, by having a, a, a large photographer team, I think that's what that, that would speak, but thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. So, I mean, Matt's doing a lot of this stuff at a high level, but uh, he also did run a photography company that he, built and sold and is still running today in uh oklahoma so i don't know if anyone's out that way but matt uh started vast so um for those who don't know i think it's pretty cool so uh if anyone has questions feel free to raise your hand throughout this i'd, I'd like to say this is pretty you know like loose collared we don't have to like sit here all poised if somebody has a question or needs clarity just raise your hand or um and, and i'll either call on you or, or feel free to just unmute yourself and we'll see if chaos starts so a few things I'm going to go over with you guys today. The, I think the number one most important one, in case you guys can't stay for the whole duration of this, is that end of year like exit survey that uh, we've been issuing for our business now for three years. And each year we've enhanced it. So I'm basically going to share with you the most recent version and sort of talk you through it. Now, again, this is for my business. You might find that there are things that don't apply to you, uh, which is totally fine um, if they don't, or you find a way that you can sort of structure this and make it better i will also like send this out to you guys too just so you can check it out see what it's all about but i think the biggest thing of, uh, about this business is like you guys like don't keep calling yourselves like a real estate photography company it's like you guys are a real estate marketing agency right who who does photography but like amongst many other things i think that's the biggest driver and i'm not sure how many of you guys are actually doing like you know sales on a day-to-day -day basis or have a sales team but a lot of the objections are like, well, you know, what's your value proposition or how are you different, right? I already have a photographer. And you're like, okay, I'll hang up the phone because you're right. I am just a photographer. That's all I have to offer. So sort of figuring out where you can start like planting your roots with realtors and, and seeing what tasks you can take off your hands. And that's something that, you know, I've said that to, um, you know, my employees that like, hey, we just can't depend on the listing market because it's unpredictable. We have no control over it, right? We don't know uh, if a client's gonna get a listing or not. And and believe it or not, there's like not that much loyalty, right? Like sometimes you'll talk to an agent, you'll see they listed a house, like, hey, why didn't we shoot that? We usually work together, like what happened there? So really positioning yourself for 2023 as like a customer service team, right? Is gonna help you guys just get so much further and build like deeper and better relationships with your clients. And, and sort of regardless, if you're a more expensive, vendor in the area right if you, you know if you're offering like a great kick-ass experience like for example i am the most expensive first in my area and i'm aware of that but but there's a reason why people come and it's it's the experience they have and they can come to expect and that's something like i don't want to call you know my students in here but there's some people i work with in here that monthly weekly daily on consulting and that's something that i i really sort of um announce to everybody on a regular basis like you guys are customer service people like how can you make sure somebody just has a great experience and and you make you make their day better you make a difference in, in their business and ultimately help them make some money so with that being said um putting this survey together is going to be now you guys can use other things i'm going to show it to you on type form and for your clients seeing this they don't really know that this is a sales tool it's not meant to sound very salesy but this is going to help qualify uh your clients too so i'm just going to do a quick screen share here bear with me make sure we share the right one jason you can be my eyes let me know if that if this is coming through with uh very little latency yeah it looks pretty good okay cool all right. So um, depending on what markets you're in, and you guys can take some notes here of, of how you sort of want to structure this, but um, depending on what markets you're in, 
it's important to figure out where your customers are coming from because at some level this form can be anonymous and what i mean by that is if somebody doesn't want to give you this information that at least you know something about you know your client let's just say your clients and for me in massachusetts are having a crappy experience and i see a pattern with like some of the answers that i get in here then i'll know where to address it so like even from you know i see most of you guys are the owners of your business or or some part of an ownership of, of the business here having uh you know a pulse on what's going on is i think like the best thing you can best thing you can do and i think a lot of us like you know if we're one one man bands like all we know how to do is just like get the shoot done go to the next one deliver that shoot and so on and so forth and and you know just hopping off that treadmill to do things like customer service can be really tough for you so this will definitely help so i'll, I'll go through this uh, you know as, sort of as quickly as i can but again just asking clients what state they're coming from very surface level here so for those who uh have automated booking right this is a very important question for you to use i don't know if you guys are using Aereo, if you guys are a part of Tonimo, or you've made something else, or you maybe you don't have automated booking. If you don't, you should, because that's huge. Uh, finding out how the booking process is easy to use. So every one of these is, is gonna end up like an open-ended question, right? Like I can use some help getting better. Um, I prefer a call, text, or email when I need services, or like, no, I didn't find it easy to use. If they're answering anything besides, uh, besides, <laughs> So your questions threw me off. If they're answering anything besides yes, then like that's noted to have somebody from your team, if not yourself, follow up and do a Zoom screen share with them of like how you go through and book that process, right? Because again, I'm gonna say this throughout this meeting a lot. You are positioning yourselves as a customer service management. Like that's all you're, you're trying to make that customer experience good. If they find that your booking process is terrible and cumbersome, they're probably gonna go to somebody who they can just shoot a quick text to, right? So understanding from the beginning of like, hey, do you find this uh, pretty easy, yes or no? So great question here. All right. So what motivated you to choose I'm fly listed, of course, but you know, you'd put your name here. What motivated you to choose us, right? So somebody might come to you and say, oh, I wanted to get on camera and be a part of my listing videos, right? So they're doing things like agent on camera, or maybe they selected you because you needed to do Matterport, but finding out what like their driver is and what's important to them. It might even be like, they like your aesthetic and your style and they find that you're different than other people in the area. Great, then they would put that information there. But this is sort of just helping narrow down like what what's important to your client. Um, ultimately, if you have a diverse offering, you're not just photo, video, or you're not just photo, video, drone, and you're or, and you're doing more. This will sort of help um, inform you of like how much you need or what sort of um, help you need to work with that client on. Excuse me. All right, favorite part. This is just so, you know, we, you, you always want to start with a positive when you're asking questions like this. You don't want to say like, hey, what did you hate about? It? So what's your favorite part of working with you? Um, again, this is just sort of a catch all answer. There could be, you know, any if they don't answer this or they write something bad, then definitely worth following up with that client. So here's where you start to open it up and figure out where where your issues are. Right. And by send, sending this out at the end of the year, like. As if you guys are experiencing the seasonality that comes along with this business around this time of year between Christmas and shortly after New Year's, then this gives you some opportunity where you can like hear from your client's perspective of like what's what's not going well, what what stinks, what what are we not doing that we could be doing better, right? And sometimes these answers might hurt. Like I've gotten some couple paragraph long answers from people, but at the end of the day, if you are like taking that feedback implementing it in some way as long as it's feasible and they're not asking you to do something crazy and then following up with that person being like hey i saw you you know had issues with this and i just wanted to like you know see if we can hop in a quick meeting to show you what i did to like make your experience better right so here we go so custom packages so a, a big part of the way that we've scaled our business and, and you can do the same with yours is like not going after the individual agent but really going after those team ridges, brokerages and like actual agencies now there will be people like for our business you need to qualify in some form of fashion of having custom packages we're not going to have our operations team go through the trouble of making all these custom operating um or custom packages excuse me if they're um somebody who's booking one to two orders a year but if you can do something that like hey i know i offer a lot of services i might not have the package you want is there something that would work better for you and offering that to somebody 
just to build that loyalty um, with them so that they have a dedicated place. Because I'll tell you, a lot of your competitors are probably not offering that, right? It's sort of like everyone just has this generic booking page. So this helps really make the process like feel a little bit special. Um, I know I saw some answers of you guys using Aereo. I don't know if we have any Tonomo users in here, but if, if we do, shout out to you. Um, and you can start to brand these custom packages for them. So they really start to feel um, like they're getting some, you know, like special treatment when they come to you. And it's really appealing if you're not offering custom packages to pitch these sorts of things to people who are having like a lot of agent loss, like retention issues at their agency of like, if they're losing top agents, right? Like be like, hey, what are you doing to help them with marketing? Are you making it easy for them to find marketing solutions? Are you helping pay for that? And I'll tell you guys right now, you would be so surprised with how many agencies either either subsidize the cost or outright pay for it. So those custom packages are really like intended for the brokers or like the teams of five who are, who are really like top producing teams that you can sort of give this assurance and a special place to, but ultimately like getting that loyalty from them of like, hey, I'm not going to go somewhere else. I have a website with a package with my name on it. So if you are doing this, uh, and the clients answer yes to this question. There you go. You've now set up like a, a meeting for yourself in January to meet with them and figure out what like what sort of custom packages or services you could be offering these guys. I'm going to pause for a second. Anybody have any questions? And if you do, feel free to raise your hand. Matthew, go off. <clears throat> no, I just was going to kind of you know, uh, echo what you're saying about <clears throat> custom packages and, and just working really with the brokerages. I think that there's definitely good and bad to custom packages that we have to be aware of. You know, every agent wants something custom for them, um, but you also got to make sure that they have buy-in in order for um, for them to, to for, for us to really justify even taking the time to build it, right? So for instance, we have a, <clears throat> we've kind of inst instituted a policy that, you know, no one can really get a custom package unless they've at least done at least three to four orders with us in the past. And we, 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 Tell them to do that so that they can at least be okay with our ecosystem and we can make sure that we work together because we're relationship based. Um, but I would say custom packaging on the brokerage level is a home run, especially when you can have that connection in the brokerage office with their managers and then they're in the ears of their agents. It works every single time for us. Yeah, it's a really good tool. And if somebody's not qualifying what they want it, you know what I mean? It gives them that much more incentive to stick around with you so they can like have that experience, right? Because again, like you don't want to be offering this to everyone and it's sort of like a crapshoot putting this question in your survey, given that every agent might answer yes to it. But do your own research at the end of the day too. If they're not a part of a team, um, they're not producing, you know, I mean, a lot of this information is public and pretty easy to find if somebody's like worth you spending the time to follow up. But at the end of the day, like you're sending this to only your clients. So you should have a good idea of like, hey, I should follow up. I think they would be a good fit for custom packages. And Matt, I appreciate you adding that in. <clears throat> All right, here's where we get down to the nitty gritty. So this is like an educational slide, right? And, and the clients, uh, well, let me rewind. The clients have the option to select as many or as little or none. I mean, I haven't seen none, but um, so if you're if you're somebody using Typeform, you want to make sure that you enable this question where they can, uh, you know, put multiple choices, but not just one. So that way, you know, um, for clients that don't select things, right, because at the end of the day, you want your clients to be your spokesperson. The whole reason we have this question is maybe they're not somebody who's going to use rendering, but somebody in their office talks about rendering. Oh, wow. Now I know Flylisted offers rendering, right? So from an educational standpoint, like your clients are essentially should be your spokespeople at the end of the day, right? They should be the ones that could tell agents in their office um, the types of things you do. And if they don't, right, this now opens up um, an opportunity for you to be like, hey, I know you you noticed that, you know, we, or I know you weren't aware that we did agent bio videos. I'd love to see you get on camera for your next listing. Like, what are your thoughts on that, right? So However, an agent answers this and every other question should literally give you a good enough template to have a 10, 15 minute sales call with a client after they've submitted the survey. Um, you'll have all the answers to everything you need to and right on that type form, it spits out, you can put it in a CSV, you can take some notes and organize. So when you're getting on that call, you know exactly what their pain points are with your system, what they like, what they don't like, what they feel like you could do better, but also, 
educating them on prospective uh, services that you do offer. Maybe they just didn't know about. I don't know if I saw a hand go up, though. I'm just going to keep it running. If you did, you can put it back up. Okay. So this is sort of where we started to, to pivot. Um, this was for, again, last year's. Our, our next year's survey is pretty similar. Stuff changed changed around here uh it goes out from our ops team tomorrow so i wasn't able to share it just yet because they have to do some stuff but anyway we did get into uh social media management and i'm not sure if anyone else uh has gone down that road it's been arguably probably our biggest asset as a company um in the last six months because there has been a significant decrease in the amount of listings out there but the number of agents has stayed the same. So realistically, we needed to find a way to still run and operate our business and keep our employees you know, employed and, and keep things going here. So um, I won't totally talk a ton about this. And if you're curious, we can chat more after this, uh, after this meeting's over. But realistically, if there's any new service that you're gonna be trying to roll, or you're gonna be trying to roll out for next year, whether, whether you're not doing video now, um, or you're not doing drone, you're not doing floor plans or websites or agent on camera, whatever that service might not be, and you really want to focus on it, and that's going to be like something you pitch to clients, I would make its own slide specifically for that. Um, and this is just going to help qualify. I was so surprised of how many people said yes to this, and it literally opened up a ton of work for our sales team. Now, not everybody, of course, closed once they found out pricing and that it was new, this and that, you know, it took a little bit to get there. But at least I had a pipeline of people who I knew were interested in the service that I was like looking to offer, right? It wasn't even off the ground when I had put that here. So just to sort of see the feasibility of one of your ideas, this is a good idea to, to create some sort of slide like this. Uh, what services or things do you wish Flylist could do better to help you with your real estate business? Um, I should go back and read off some of these answers because I did find it was really cool. Um, but you know, the, the answers were more or less across the board. There were people who wanted a more economical package, and it was kind of a trending answer. So we created a more economical package with like you know cheaper cheaper editors ultimately, and a you know and a and a junior level photographer who was able to work at a you know rate that made it sense for us. So. Whatever the answers from from that might be, um, you know, don't go and reinvent the wheel, but just like the whole idea with this is to like look for patterns and then take that advice and feedback and implement it into your business. Uh, let's see here. I think this is the last slide. Uh, so we did give away an iPad last year. Now, I'm not telling you guys to go out and do that, but if you're not, if there's no sort of incentive for somebody to like spend their 10, 15 minutes, maybe even more, doing this um you know what i mean so you don't have to give away an ipad you could give away i mean find something that either has no or low cost to you if maybe you'll give away some free drone photos or some a free floor plan on your next listing right something that doesn't necessarily require you to go out and spend money for somebody but think of some sort of like reason why somebody would want to participate and engage in this all ipad all, all realtors like ipads so we did get a lot of um people to sign up for this. I believe we had 268 responses out of the four, 450 that were sent. So like just above 50%, which is pretty good. Um, and I would say you could probably expect pretty similar results. Like don't expect everybody is going to take the time to fill this out. Uh, this last, you know, question 10 here, um, <clears throat> The reviews are huge, right? I mean, let's just pretend you let's just pretend 100 people are going to fill this out for you right now. There, there's an opportunity where you've asked them for a sale. You've asked them about prospective future services. You've educated them on what you do. And now you just want to collect a review. Um, I would say if you think you're going to get smoked on that review, maybe have a conversation with that person in particular before you send it. Maybe maybe you guys didn't leave off on a good answer on a good foot. Um, but whatever it might be, I, I really recommend trying to get as many reviews. I believe this round of surveys for us got us like 40, 50 reviews. Not everyone wanted to do it. Um, but at the end of the day, we added 50 reviews with you know the click of an email button. So um, I'll show you guys Rapuso for those who are not familiar. I know a lot of the guys in my consulting group are already using this. Um, it's basically a way to help farm reviews for your business. And I think it's been... <laughs> I think it's like the best 10 or 20 bucks a month I spend because uh, it sort of helps prevent you from the potential of somebody right, leaving a bad review for your business. So having this question in there, give them a link that they can hyperlink. If you look at my review link, it's uh, up here. 
they're going to go ahead and click this and it's just basically going to bring them right to where i want them to go which is the screen um anybody using repuso here that's not in my consulting group no jason you, you've been using it yeah i've been using it mm -hmm. cool cool okay Sweet. Well, I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, next question. I, I think that might be it. Oh, yes. Sorry. The most important question. So if somebody fill, takes the time to fill out this entire thing and then doesn't leave their name, it does make it a little bit hard for you to follow up with them. So um, I, it's totally up to you if you want to make this uh, a mandatory field. Keep in mind, if somebody really, truly doesn't want to share the information, they can type in a bunch of gibberish and submit it. Uh, that's sort of the trouble with type form and survey tools. But for the most part, I think you'll find that people will feel pretty comfortable, especially again, if these are clients you're sending this to um, about doing the survey for you and following up. Like ultimately you want to be able to get in contact with everybody who submitted this and hopefully give something cool away to somebody. So um, I'll stop there on the uh, end of your recap survey. I guess, does anybody have any questions or anything to add? Don, go ahead, my friend. We sent this out um, last week and got a bunch of responses uh, following up with a bunch of people. So this is so far has been really uh, beneficial for us. The question I have for you is, do you have any suggestion? We didn't give anything away. Um, well, that's great. You, know, maybe, you didn't have to. Well, we may because we didn't get as many as I was hoping. So my question <clears> to you is, if we're doing this, if people are doing this, um, do you have any suggestions on follow-ups to try to like kind of push people to answer the, you know, to get on it? Because, you know, we send it out, it comes up in the email, and I'm guessing a lot of times people say, oh, it's just a survey, I'm just going to let it go. Do you follow up with yeah. an email, a text, a phone call? What's your thought on that? Definitely. I mean... I don't know how many of you guys in the last five years have bought a car, particularly a new one, but they make it like extremely important that you fill out that survey, right? They're not like, it's not the Dunkin' Donuts experience. You want to be like, Hey, fill out the survey at the bottom. You'll get a free donut. It's like, this is really important. Right. And I think you're going to find that you're not going to get the results you want to from that initial round of emails. You might get 10%, mm -hmm. right? Then you either, what I would do is follow up in an email or call, depending. I mean, I prefer a call. I'm more of a texter, but I think there should, at the very least, like, like set your business a cutoff date. Like realistically, if you get one of these on January 2nd, it's not going to be the end of the world. But if you'd be like, hey, I know you're busy. I know it's, I know it's the holidays. Like it would mean a ton to me um, that, you know, I want to give this feedback to my team. Uh, we want to make sure that we're stepping in, you know, to 2023 with the right foot. Like your feedback would be really important because at the end of the day, we don't experience the, the the pain points. We we only know our business, right? We're not realtors. We don't we don't know what these people go through. We just know that they're all busy and disorganized and don't know how to use technology. But I would absolutely say that like you should one thousand percent call, text. Don't do it every day, but just be like, hey, just let them know. They say, hey, this is really important if you can help me. I, I don't mean to bug you. I think it'll take five to 10 minutes of your time. You know what I mean? And maybe if, maybe if you really, really have to, like, be like, hey, if I'll, I'll throw in a whatever. I'll throw in a second floor floor plan. Um, you know, what, whatever it might be that you can just sort of get them over. <laughs> I don't think you need to give anything away. I, I don't. And that was sort of a win. We probably shouldn't have. We should have saved ourselves the... 500 bucks on the iPad, but um, it, you're going to have to follow up. There's, you know, and Matt, do you have something to add to that? I did. Um, <clears throat> we've, we've done, we do numerous, numerous surveys and we, we typically send them out of our, um, our like, C, like CRM. But what we've done is also, you know, okay, maybe the first survey that we send out isn't maybe properly executed or maybe we could have done better. It just kind of falls to their mailbox. Um, but one thing that I, we did one time is everyone that did participate in the survey, granted, we know that not everyone's just going to flood us with an order, but we offered them 10%. We, we reached out to everyone who took the survey and we offered them 10% off on their next order, which meant that those, <clears throat> those, those, you know, hundred people <laughs> that we personally reached out to and thanked them for taking our survey or even sending them an email and giving them 10% off, like 
that actually, I think, paid it forward even a little bit more for us because, you know, we took the time. They took the time to do it. And then also the next time around, they were also more apt to do it as well. Um, but as long as we curate something that is interesting, also doesn't take a lot of time. Like, that's the biggest thing. If someone opens up a survey and they got to scroll through it a bunch of times, they're not going to finish it, right? And so then it was curating questions that are concise, simple, but easy for us to really look at and say, okay, actually, we can, we can, we can do something with this data. <clears throat> and, like, make it easy for them to do it. Like, there's so many templates on um, type form, I couldn't think of it, uh, that are, like, pretty cumbersome like make it easy make you know find a template that works i'll look into the back end of this when matt takes over and i'll i'll drop the name of the template and if you guys did like this one but like don't don't make it crazy it doesn't need a lot of a graphics it just needs to serve its purpose so um is there any other questions regarding the uh survey cool cool all right i'm gonna close this down real quick I think there's some people still joining here. Um, give me just one second here, guys. I just got to admit some people into the room. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> All right. Oh, here we are. All right, cool. So the next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about um, is end of the year um, promotions for your business, but more importantly, like for your clients too. So last year we were able to capture uh, somewhere around $80,000 worth of like upfront retainers, uh, which were really helpful. Now, a lot of these agents are, they make, you know, if you're working with top dogs, like they're, they're making money and they're trying to offset their uh, expenditures at the end of the year. Like if they're already going to be spending money with you guys next year, they're a good client. Those are the people, like I would say, like the top 10 or 15% clients that you work with would be like your most qualified people to be offering this type of um, like program for them. And it's really simple. Um, I'll share with you the ones that we just put out into the world today. Um, so the way that we roll these out is like a three part process. So we share them on our Instagram story on the first day. Now, everyone in my business does have their own um, Instagram. So all my employees have like a will.flylisted, simon.flylisted. I think it's a good idea if you guys have employees to like have them create Instagrams that they can share their like POV, right? If so if you have people who are coming to work at your business, they can like, you know, we encourage all of our employees to like be a part of the Instagram community to post their own work to Instagram. Um, and even like as a business owner, like if you have like a personal Instagram that you're like intermingling, like make one that's like your name dot your business. Um, and like show the guts, show your life. I think people really uh, attract and gravitate towards that. But having that said, the promotions that we created too, and I'll just sort of run through them real quick. Wrong button, sorry. Uh, entire screen. Let's see. Google Meet is good for everything until it comes time to share your screen. Okay, so these were made from our marketing department uh, between yesterday and today. So I'll just give you guys a quick little overview of um, what these look like. So obviously Canva, like Canva is great. Our team uses it. And if your business isn't using Canva, highly recommend it, super easy. And like you can save this for next year and put in 2024. So that's a nice thing is everything's like cataloged, easy to organize. So we created a story that goes on our personal Instagram. That's just at fly listed. Um, and then we also circulate this through Slack to all of our employees, have them post it too, because a lot of clients do follow them too. And we give them a little kickback for getting a client, um, you know, from their story. Then what we do is on Instagram, there's a little boost button, right? For the stories, you're going to go ahead and boost this post after the first day. So right as it's about to expire on hour 23, that's where you go into it and boost it. And realistically, I mean, you can put in whatever you want for us. We put in, I think, $1,000, which if one person pays for these retainers, it, it sort of does make sense. So I'll just kind of scroll through these so you guys can take a look too. And I'll, um, if any of you guys follow, playlist of these are currently on our story. But anyway, um, try to offer things that make sense for you guys because, I mean, at you know, some of us are running businesses that are like really, really profitable because we don't have a lot of overhead. We don't have a lot of employees. And this could be like that 
that gasoline that really gets your fire started. If one of your clients cuts you a check for five, 10 grand, or even maybe more, uh, I think it's like really worth your while to stash that money away. Now, mind you, um, you will get taxed on that, but your client won't. So that's sort of the whole shtick. Um, but there's two clients in our particular market and you guys probably can relate to this and it's Sotheby's and Compass. So those two agencies uh, give their or their their agents uh, marketing spend, right? And that marketing spend um, from my clients, from what I've heard, can range anywhere from $200 to like $50,000, right? And that's not money they have to pay back to... Um, you know, the agency, that's like free marketing spend. It helps retain them as agents, right? But a lot of those agents uh, or agencies, Compass, Sotheby's, it's a use it or lose it type of program. So if you guys are working with those two uh, agencies, those are the types of people that I recommend going after is the people who you know have marketing spend dollars. Um, a lot of our clients have to dump and get rid of this marketing spend because it just goes away if they don't use it. So those are the types of people that I think come up as number one, like, hey, I should reach out to these people. Now, these same stories that you're airdropping or texting or downloading from Dropbox to your phone, if you're in touch with some good clients, text it to them, right? So here's, I'll give you an example of another one. So here's here's what we've like, quote unquote, just started here. There's a $5,000 with a 5% bonus credit. Um, and that's really good for anything. We, we give them a little synopsis of who would be a good fit for this. Because again, we have to really break this down and simplify this for the types of people that we work with there hectic, busy, and you need to grab their attention really quickly, right? So um, we did, you know, have a play on the colors. We think yellow is a good color to grab people's attention. Uh, we have the $10,000 one with a 10, you know, 10% bonus credit. And then we also have a $20,000 with a 15% bonus credit. So um, I have extended these because it is holidays. It's There is a good chance that you guys are not going to be able to connect with the high rollers who are out skiing in Aspen and their phone is not with them and they're not looking at anything till January 3rd of like extending this out into January of 2020, geez, 2023. It feels weird to say it because you're not going to get the people, um, you know, you're not going to get everyone in between now and December 20th. There are also a, um, there's also, you know, the opportunity for you to really like kickstart January. January historically for us has been a slow month. And I don't know if that speaks for other people here, but it's just not the, the best months. And if you can put, you know, five, 10, 20 grand away, um, it's going to help. So offering something like a 15% bonus credit, super important, right? Because nobody's going to shell out this type of money, but like go into your QuickBooks or go into your FreshBooks and see who's already spending this a year. Those are the types of people I think you should be having these conversations with. If I go into my QuickBooks and I filter my customers down by everyone who spent $20,000 or more this year, I'm going to email this in Texas to every single one of them and say, look, you spent $25,000 in 2022. I'm imagining you're going to double down and do more this year. It's like, I have this promotion. I think you'd be a great fit for it, right? So there's something for everyone, right? And maybe this is 40 ask for like your market, but just sort of take this as a grain of salt of like, hey, maybe I can come up with something. Um, I did sort of go back and forth with my operations team a little bit on this. Um, I do think that the if you want to sort of one up this opportunity here is create things that are like this, create like a pack, right? Create a bundle because once they, sometimes if they see that $5,000, like their brain goes crazy. But if they have a package that they come to your website for like really frequently and they buy the book and buy the same thing every single time and they're going to come back to you anyway, like find a way to say, hey, I know you do a ton of gold bundles with us here's eight, get two free. And just say like, it doesn't expire. It doesn't go away. Like even if you don't use it in 2023, odds are they will. And as you know, if you're a good, good savvy business person, you'll get them to, to spend this and upgrade their listing packages every time. But um, these have been huge for us. This is all anybody in my company is doing in between now and December 31st. So um, I'll, again, I'll put these examples in a email to you guys. Uh, Matthew Wood, go ahead. Yeah. And, and just to like, again, echo it, like th this is something that we've done um, in the past and it actually works. I, I do, I do say that we be we're, we're a little careful in um, some of our clients because we, we know that they're going to spend the money. Um, and by, you know, taking a little bit of a hit um, we, you know, we, we use our best judgment as possible. Um, but though, 
this is a no brainer for a lot of people, especially with the planners, right? And whenever you can put an offer out here that is like this, where he says, oh, buy 10, get two free. I mean, that's easy dollars and cents. You throw up $10,000, man, people, people's brains go crazy, especially agents who might spend 10K, but they're scraping by to hopefully spend that 10K and they're going to spend it through 12 months. But your agents that are, you know, spending anywhere from three, two to three listings a month, easy for them to, to really, you know, calculate. Um, one other thing that we also do on, on this is, you know, try to find other value that maybe you're not necessarily able to give to all clients, but some clients. Um, I don't know how, you know, everybody's business is a little bit different. I've got a little bit of a larger team. So I can actually maybe say that, oh, with this spend level, you're going to get a dedicated account manager that, you know, that's your person. You're always going to be connected with that person. And then I can also maybe even incorporate having a dedicated photographer as well, especially if they're, if their area is specific and I can work with that. All these agents want is consistency. They don't really care about like excuses or problems. They just want it to be done right the first time and they want you to be consistent. And so when I can lean in and say, hey, you know what? We're going to make sure that we have one of our senior creatives with you every single time, um, especially, you know, even as a, a high spend agent or even whenever they're doing a retainer, I think it's just a lot of peace of mind. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the my ops team thought it was like, hey, let's put the dollar figure up, but they're now working on every single, well, I wouldn't say every single package, but our most most popular packages is like, just give two away, right? Create 10, give two away, um, or do, you know, five and one, but whatever, whatever that math like shakes out for your business to make sense, like there is theoretically something for everyone. And yes, if you don't think that, or if, excuse me, if, if you know it's going to come anyway, might not be the people but I, that you want to send this out to. Um, but again, that this is like sealing the deal. And the best thing you can do with retainers when you do it is do not put it on the books for the month. So what I mean that, like if for those who are using QuickBooks, um, I'm going to speak on QuickBooks because that's all I use. You're going to put this in what's called like a trust account. So it won't actually add that 10,000 unless you truly want it to, to the, your cash flow for the month. Now, obviously that 10,000 will hit your bank um, and it'll be there for you to spend. But at the same time, um, you don't necessarily have to like declare this as like a, a sale. And when I say that, like every time a client books, you're deducting from like a special account you create for them in QuickBooks. So if you do end up doing this and you have success with it, just make sure you track it because the worst thing that could happen is somebody gets billed and they're like, you know, they just totally diminishes your trust with that client if they've handed you 10K and you've misaccounted for whatever, you know, whatever, whatever agreement you had. So make sure you have some sort of trackable system. I'd say the best way to do it is to create a trust account in QuickBooks because you're not going to want to have to even think about, you know, the clients that have retainers. Now, mind you, if they don't end up using this at the end of the year, you can sort of push them in the direction of creating like a, a small marketing video uh, for them just to like help get them to get, you know, get this spent. Because obviously your goal is to have this spent in the quickest amount of time as possible, right? To them, they're like buying a gift card to your business and getting, uh, you know, free stuff out of it. And that's fine. But your goal is to like get that person on the phone and talk about their next listing as soon as you get that, uh, you know, you know, it's January, January 1st of next year. So um, I think it's a great offering. And like I said, um, it could really help sort of get things moving along. If, if you need to, you know, hire somebody or buy some equipment or invest in some software and you don't want to like throw it on the credit card, then this is definitely helpful and something that we've like fundamentally built our business on um, when we first started and, and you know, beyond that. So uh, if, if you guys have no more questions there, I'm um, definitely happy to move on and I'll leave some time for a Q&A at the end and I'll... Uh, try to give you guys a good little tidbit of something I've been working on that I think could be really helpful for you guys too. I talked to uh, Matt about uh, electing ambassadors today. So it could be a fun little uh, side project for you guys too. So um, Matt, talking about uh, offsetting taxable liability here for these guys, um, you know, the tax code is, is interesting. Obviously, you, you know, everyone here deals with having to pay taxes. I actually got a really interesting letter from the IRS yesterday for those who can see it they have uh predetermined how much i should be sending them <laughs> each and every single month for 2020 uh 2023 so 
<laughs> kind of interesting to see that the IRS is pre you know preemptively telling me what I owe them, but um, it, I thought it was kind of funny and humorous. So um, I think the biggest thing out of the gate, and I'll let you dive in here, Matt, is uh, Section One Seventy Nine. Um, I guess if you feel comfortable talking about that, um, then I'll give you the mic. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess I need to qualify my background. My background is tax accounting. Um, like before doing, before going into real estate marketing and marketing in general, um, my like formal education is accounting and finance. And, uh, you know, I worked in the corporate world for a while. Um, but I, I, I was able to take a lot of, you know, those concepts and ideas and, and bring them into the small business. And, and on our side, like, I think it'd be really good to know. Um, how many of you currently have their own, your own accountant or at least having someone else do your taxes other than yourself? That's a really good place to start. You just raise your hand, put them up. All right, good. That's a good thing. Because <clears throat> if you're at least having, working with a CPA, they're going to absolutely, you know, help you in, in the best fashion, depending on how much you pay them. Like it might just be, you got a good deal or you got, you got someone who can, uh, truly help you out because minimizing your tax liability is one of the best things that you can possibly do, especially if you've been in business for less than five years. Um, in, in our case, when we talk about like section 179, it's definitely one piece of the pie. Um, but I would assume that everyone on this call who is doing work for their business is driving a vehicle. Um, I, you know, it, everyone can have a different business structure of, of how you're set up. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll kind of speak to those who I assume is probably operating as just a, a simple, you know, single member LLC. Um, I, I think that, you know, it's really important for you to, to truly take advantage of, you know, every single dollar that you possibly can. The fact that you go buy a vehicle and you got really excited, you got you a new car and, you know, you're using lots of miles on that car to like, pay, like to, to, to drive to your shoots. Right. Um, all of these different, everything that goes into going to a shoot really is expensive. From the depreciation in your car to the depreciation on your camera equipment. Like every single, every single thing that you buy for your business. Personally, I, I always use the rule of thumb of over $2,500. Um, anything over $2,500, it should be tracked and logged and utilized in its useful life. So cameras, cameras typically have a, a useful life. In our minds, when we think about Sony and we think about Canon, we're always wanting to upgrade like every year because there's always new technology. But as, as a, according to the IRS and according to, you know, tax law, um, a useful life of a camera is actually around, it's like five to seven years. Um, so when you go to, uh, you know, when you're working on, in, and when it comes to tax time, think about all your assets that you bought over this year and even assets that you bought in previous years that you're actually still utilizing for your business. And if their rule of thumb is about over $2,500, you can actually be depreciating those expenses in your business. And if you're not doing that, you need to speak with your accountant to make sure that you have depreciation on your books um, because it will help you in so many different ways. If you're in a, in, if you're in a place where, you know what, your tax liability, you're going to have to owe money to the government. Um, you can actually utilize rules in rules to basically take more of a depreciation hit on your assets in that current year so that you can owe less in taxes versus maybe you at your business took a loss based on everything that you did. Well, you know what? I'm going to extend that depreciation over the useful life of that period of time so that I can actually take advantage of this camera I bought right now two years from now on my books so that I can actually pay less in taxes two years from now. Um, <clears throat> on a high level, we could go really granular. I get really nerdy about this stuff. Um, but I would just say, be aware of anything that you buy for the business and how it can really impact. Traditionally, you, when you, if someone's just using like QuickBooks, um, like business pro or whatnot, you're just thinking about the things that you buy and writing it off year over year. But there is a lot of benefit to extending the useful life because if, if something has a life that's over one year, typically you want to depreciate it. Um, things that have, you know, things like your memory cards, you're buying a tripod, you're buying something that's just like you need it now and you're going to use it for this job. 
typically you can utilize and just say, we're going to, we're going to just consider it as an expense that we're going to write off this year, but bigger assets. If you bought you a nice cinema camera, you bought you a nice inspire, you can actually extend that out. And so that over time that say, once you get rid of it, you can sell it. You can then, they all have a salvage value so that you can actually write a loss even, even further down the line, man. I know that I, I can just throw so much at you with this, but I would recommend if you want to talk deeply about what all types of things that you could do, Section 179, or even from an asset side, I'm, I'm absolutely happy to connect with you. But I would say that if you are working with a CPA, ask them about which assets are on your books and what things you're, you're like, what's your depreciation schedule actually looks like? Um, because it could be surprising for you. And once you look at your, you know, your book or look at your previous year's taxes, you can actually see what your dis- your depreciation expense looks like and you can totally use it to your advantage. And I totally agree with that. And the reason I know that sort of sounds like a mouthful and for those like myself who are not accounting savvy or you're like, whoa, where do I even start from all of that, right? Like maybe your, your books aren't perfect or you haven't, you know, you haven't been keeping track of stuff or you're using your personal reimbursements through your business, whatever, whatever that might be. Um, just be wary that the fiscal year for most of you guys is, is December 31st. Right. So like your books are refreshing, um, in, in just a couple days here or a week or so. Um, and, and making sure if you are going to have tax liability and you haven't been putting that money aside, that you're really mindful of how you spend money, um, until you have that sort of figured out. Now, the, for the most part, if you use QuickBooks, you should have, or whatever accounting software you guys decide to use, um, set up where you should have some sort of idea, but just be mindful that you're not spending, you know, 2022's tax money on a new cinema camera that you're going to have to end up paying back. And, and I really recommend, you know, that section 179, like literally type it into Google, right? If you're not sure on how that works and, and what that really means, uh, basically, in small words, um, and, and this is the scenario I use. So I did this with my, we do it with our equipment, <clears throat> but the thing that really tipped it over for us was a vehicle that I purchased for uh, the company. For I, I use it as my, my personal vehicle. I know I'm not supposed to, but the IRS is not checking that. So, um, you know, I bought a vehicle that was $50,000, right? And when I went to the dealership to buy that vehicle, I did not pay $50,000 in cash. I, I, took the monthly payment, which was what, six, $700 or whatever it was a month, right? That six, $700 a month is going to equate to, I, my math is off, but somewhere around, I don't know, 60, 6,000, let's just call it $6,000 over the course of a year. Um, but I can depreciate that entire $50,000 year one, right? Even though I'm only out six grand, I can take a $50,000 write-off Right. So if I made $150,000, I bought a hundred or a $50,000 car, but I only spent six grand on that car for that first year in my payments. I can take that entire 50 K and depreciate it. So now my taxable income becomes a hundred K. Go ahead, Matt. <clears throat> I would, I would advise you to speak with your accountants about that uh, because your vehicle is not over 6,000 pounds. So actually oh, you can't, you yeah. can't legally, um, depreciate 50k. The actual most deduction you can possibly do is 25,000 um, on your vehicle. So you should probably speak with your accountant. But well, no, it I, has to be six. It has to be six thousand pounds. So I believe the way that the the code has now worked itself is that basically it's a percentage base. So six thousand pounds would be a hundred percent of the write off, right? So as you get below that threshold of six thousand pounds, you're taking right. a, a less a percentage. Correct. But I just want to make sure that when you're, we're talking as a whole, that, that you go buy your new Honda Accord, your new Honda Accord does not necessarily cross qualify it. There's limits for SUVs and crossovers. Um, but in your case, everyone is eligible for this type of deduction. The deduction varies based on the vehicle, based on the purchase price, and also per, ba- based on the size. Size is a big factor, but the goal is, especially if you're driving a truck, you're driving something big, you're going to have it, you're going to have a bigger deduction. But if you have something a little bit smaller, um, you're going to, you're going to have a lesser deduction though. Your qualifying amount is calculated based on the size of the vehicle. I would just, just to be clear, 
I don't want people to think that you could go buy a fifty thousand dollar car and you're gonna have fifty thousand dollars for write off. Because right, I, I right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, no, that's, no, that's no. Yes. And don't don't buy a light car if you plan on doing that, like weight wise. Because I literally went through Google and typed in the G G V R W of every single car I could think of, and uh, be surprised. There's not a whole lot of commercial like SUVs out there that weigh six thousand pounds. It's very limited. Um, and, until you get into like the uh, big Tahoe's and stuff, which are horrible on fuel. But um, cool. I appreciate that. Um, I guess, does anybody have any questions regarding Matthew's book of taxes? Okay. Well, if you find that something comes up, um, we'll keep a line of communication open. That, that Facebook thread was uh, pretty helpful. There is one thing I missed here, and I'll just fly through it because we have five minutes. But um, for those who are not using Rapuso, please like go do it for your business. It's literally like, I think one of the best tools next to Typeform. Um, I will just pull up my screen real quick. Uh, I will put in, um, I'll send you guys like a referral code too. I'm pretty sure you get like a month or two for free if I send it to you or half, I don't know, the bill's reduced. It's, it's short money, 10, 10, 15 bucks a month. Uh, totally worth it. Um, so this guy here, this is Rapuso, really good. So my customer success team does use this quite a bit um, after every single appointment. And what you saw in the survey that I had sent out to you guys, um, that review link, that's that's coming here, right? So when people see this, and I'm just gonna show you what this does when we go to it, right? So they're coming here because if you're asking somebody to write a review i mean we prefer google because it really helps your um your seo of getting lots of reviews for your business you're going to pop up first uh we want facebook or google preferably google but if somebody really wants to write a facebook they do have that option so they come here they see this link now you can customize whatever this says this won't take long for you to set up probably 10 15 minutes click on here it's going to give me the two options of my review sources. Now, if you have other preferred review sources, you can embed link those there. Um, I definitely recommend having Google as your first because, again, that's going to help bring you up above your competitors. But let's just say I had a not so good experience, right? And it actually is not letting me go through and proceed with that um, Google or Facebook review here. And what this does is this is actually coming into our backend system being logged as like feedback, right? So it's not gonna go and post it publicly. Now, your customers who are only interacting with this tool once, right, probably aren't gonna know that. If they're going, they're not gonna go back and click and be like, wait, I don't see a, I don't see a Google or Facebook thing here. I should go back, right? So they'll go ahead and do their one star review and you know, go ahead and you know, yell into the void here and tell you guys how horrible you are. You missed a photo of the deck on the house. Um, but at the end of the day, like you know, you don't want to put fake reviews here and you can set up Repuso to basically for a while I was farming um, reviews in the sense of like, I wouldn't allow somebody if their review wasn't five stars, it was not publicly posting. I did just lower that to four stars because I think it like, there's a level of skepticism that comes when somebody sees you have 196 five star reviews, right? It's like, I, I'm, I'm almost wanting somebody to go and publicly write a one star review. At the end of the day, like if you don't have a lot of re reviews, you definitely don't want to be like starting off low because Google is going to throw your rank down if you're if you're reviews or if, even if you're not using Google for your business page, you need to do it. Um, it's really good in the sense of like making sure that your reviews stay clean because it is so hard to get a bad Google review removed unless you directly reach out to the person who wrote it and ask them to change it. Now, another reason I really like Rapuso too is um, when I come into here, let's see. Okay, so we gotta re-up our thing. So basically what we do here is we can enter in phone numbers. Let's see if I can pull it up right here. So we can actually send the uh, review link directly to our customers and it goes right in their phone as a text message too because you're gonna find that the, the way of the email for realtors is like slowly dying, right? And all of them are now doing their communication from texting they prefer to have text conversations from you so you can pull up their number and you can put it in here and it'll automatically issue and send that review collections form to them um, we have a post appointment follow-up process that our customer success team uses so you know after the files are, are delivered they will uh, call them check in make sure everything's good and then 24 hours after that call they are getting this our customer success team's like hey just making sure things went well 
you're going to get a survey. So we're already prefacing and letting them know that this is like on, on its way. So it's no surprise when they get a text message on their phone. Um, and you know, you, this is, allows you if people aren't filling it out to like follow up and be like, Hey, you know, just checking in with you. Saw you didn't have a chance to review, uh, the survey I sent you, you mind just doing it super helpful, important to us. Right. Cause realtors get it. Like they want reviews on their Google business page publicly too. So this shouldn't feel like a point of resistance for you guys. It should feel like, Hey, now I have a system and a tool that I can use to get reviews. Um, and yes, I mean, I hate to say it, but as businesses that are, your reputation is everything you want to limit the amount of poor reviews you get. Um, you know, if somebody's going to go and write a bad review, you'd rather just get them on the phone before them doing that and figuring out like, Hey, how can I make this experience like a, a five-star experience for you? Because I want you happy. So I'll put a link uh, for um, this program. I know a lot of the guys that I'm working with in here already are using it great and hopefully it's working good for you. Um, but worth checking out. I'm not sure if they offer a free trial, but if they do definitely like a tool that's critical for your business. Now, another reason why I really like it too, and just to wrap up here, oops, is that on our webpage here, if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, all those reviews are going to come in and just like pop up and show clients in the corner, regardless of like what page they're on. I think there's a few pages that it's not turned on, but it's just going to funnel through like a carousel, all your different reviews. And it's going to say like one minute ago, which is a review we could have, I don't know, I haven't checked them, but I think it's really nice. But then you can also go into uh, this. So we've actually embedded all our testimonials publicly on our website. And it's another feature that I think Rapuso does a great job at. So when you're giving your value proposition publicly to your clients, they can come in and see if you have great reviews, like show them off, like get it, get it, you know, get that message across to your clients, show them that there's 250 five-star reviews from people that they can, you know, in our real estate market, they know exactly who Sarah McGuire is. So that is my last little tidbit. Um, I'm going to open it up for like a half an hour, pretty lax. If you guys just want to fire away and ask some questions. Um, I appreciate all of you guys who came in and joined and, you know, if, if you guys feel like I've been helpful to you, um, there's some other members of my consulting group here that I work with monthly. And if, and if you feel like you and your business would benefit from, you know, having the help of somebody who can help you with coaching and getting you on track and, and writing business strategies together and uh, helping you guys grow and scale your business, I would love to definitely chat with you. You know, I've been doing this for I'm going into my fifth year now, Flylisted. We have a, a great company here and I've met you know, not all of you, but some of you in person, which is great. I know Matt Wood is out in, he's working on a California business. He's out in Oklahoma. Uh, Don and Blas, you guys are right in my neck of the woods in Massachusetts. So um, love, love seeing you guys. Um, but yeah, this is our office here. I don't know if you guys can sort of see it. It's been kind of hidden, but we have our operations and editing suite here. We've got our studio space behind us, which I actually borrowed my aperture light. As you can tell, I look so beautiful during this call um and yeah this is a cool little space here and we're going to be opening up another office pretty soon so i've uh attributed our success to just reinvesting in our our people and and like creating just that really kick-ass customer service experience and like maybe you're not the type of person who wants to go and jump on the phone and like schmooze and make your customer smile maybe maybe that's not you but at the end of the day i feel like these businesses are gonna um you know, start really having to adapt to the market conditions changing here pretty soon. I know that there's a lot of us here who are like, the heck happened to business like this December? What, you know, why, why are things a little bit slower than I thought? And, and really a big part of what I'm working with uh, the folks in here, uh, like Don and Blage and Jason, um, a couple others who couldn't make it, or maybe they're in here buried in the 13 others. But um, I was really like trying to diversify your business, right? Of keeping you, your photographers, your equipment, like perpetually running like a revolving door and you know you don't want to necessarily have to wait for that next listing call to uh you know go to the bank and put some money away so if for those interested definitely i'll reach out to you or you can reach out to me or whatever but i'd love to even spend some time with you guys one-on-one -on -one. i think collaborating in this space has just been so helpful and it's great to see all these faces in here and now i know i can send referrals out to mark out in chicago if i need somebody you know it's always nice to be able to create this network and this web of people i mean i don't know if you guys have have had the opportunity to refer business to other people in this industry because you know they're great. Um, but I think that's one of the best things is to get on a call with a client. They're like, hey, we also have properties in, in Florida. Do you uh, work out there? 
And, you know, at the end of the day, I tell them I have a great referral partner. I have a sister company named Aerial Canvas, and they're going to help you out. I'll make that intro for you. And that happens all the time in this business, too. And so I really appreciate the sense of community, um, especially before the holidays. I'm, I'm flattered to see everyone in here. But I will open it up to some Q&A. I saw some people ask some questions in the chat here. So... Oof, I don't know if they're talking. Let's see. Crispin, let's see. Uh, how do you go about getting unique reviews if you have the same realtors booking each time when they forward it to the homeowner? So, no, you don't You don't want to send the review link over to somebody who's already seen or has reviewed you. So let me uh, show you how we keep track of that here. And I don't know if any of you guys are on HubSpot, um, definitely raise your hand. But that's what we use. And I know Aerial Canvas uses too. Um, but one of the, let's see if I could just share my screen really quick to, and I hope I'm answering your question in the way that you're asking it, but I'm just going to pull this up real quick just so you can see what I'm talking about. So these are all the, obviously our contacts our 8,050 contacts that are in here. And I'm just going to go to a realtor here. And when I go to his name, let's see. So these are all like new appointments that our customer service team has to go through, but we actually have a link here that says either yes or no, if they've reviewed us. So before any of our clients get that post follow-up appointment call, we're coming in here and seeing if this is blank, then they'd be, you know, deserving of, of, of a writing review for you. Um, but I think it's important to have that, especially like think of everything at scale for your business. If you have five, 600 shoots, uh, let's just say a month, right? You get, you end up becoming a conglomerate. There's no way for you to check that unless you have a system. So really just having a place where you can go so you don't have to scroll through Google to figure out if they reviewed you or not. You're going to come punch their name into your database and figure out if they've reviewed you. Because neither, I think the weirdest thing that can happen is like a double review from the same person. I think one client accidentally did do that to us and it's still live. And I don't really care if someone's really can, looking for it. Can multiple it, people review under one Google account? I don't think they... No, they can. They, they certainly can. Yeah, because people like oftentimes will write a bad review on a business and then revisit it and have a great experience and then post a new review mm -hmm. without actually just going in and editing their crappy review. Um, Got it. I, yeah. So having, a, I mean, the, this version of HubSpot, I mean, there it's free, right? There's no reason why you can't have the same um, interface that I'm seeing here. That sales starter tool, which I think all of you guys should have. I know all of my consulting clients, you guys are all at HubSpot and I hope to God you're using it in the way that you should be. Um, but at the end of the day, like this is free. You can go on HubSpot.com today and start your like whatever free account. I don't work for them, but I will say like your organization needs something like this. I know Aerial Canvas, who is doing <clears throat> far beyond what we're doing for revenue is using HubSpot. Um, but you can customize it so it makes sense for you, right? Like a reviewed us link, I wrote this myself and put it in here, it took a second to do it. I know Jason, you just, I think you just did that with me too, not too long ago. So um, <clears throat> ho hopefully that helped. Um, go ahead, Jason, I see you have your hand raised while I'm talking on you. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I thought I thought I could put my uh, hand down too. Uh, yeah, I have done that. You helped me set that up in my CRM on HubSpot. It's pretty cool. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I think it's really helpful. The, the CRM is, I think it's that next step. That next step of leveling up. You know, I, I think back to early on in this business when I figured I realized that <clears throat> I was taking photos, and then I was editing my own photos, and then I was sending them out, and I hated myself, and then I found a BA. And I think that, you know, that's just like the, 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 the progression, right? And I think that once you go from, you know what? Hey, we're on ARIO. Awesome. That's great. ARIO kind of has a built-in CRM just a little bit, right? Um, but having, if you, if you expand to having a little bit larger of a team than just you, maybe two, one or two people, HubSpot's a really great place to manage the client profile. Because ARIO doesn't have the ability, Portal or Autonomo doesn't have the ability to really manage like, your actual client interactions. It's just like project related. The one thing I do know, <clears throat> I do believe this because um, I, uh, I I did talk to an ARIO rep. I do believe that they have the ability to integrate with HubSpot um, so that your orders can be linked to clients in HubSpot. So you can then go on to your HubSpot account if you were to make one and even run, run data and run reports to just see like spend in a different area. Yeah, you can see it in ARIO. But whenever you, you see it on the client profile where it's got all of their information, and if you've got multiple people working with clients, you can see all of the emails that are attached to just that one client in one spot. It's like absolutely helpful 
especially keeping everything in line and together. Because the last thing you want to do is have multiple people reaching out to a client about one thing and you're over communicating. They don't know who they need to be talking to. And, you know, you just, you really just are doing them a disservice by oversharing and also just not being organized. And it, it's definitely a no brainer. Yeah. And like I said, it's literally to get underway. It's free, right? Like there's not going to be an, like there, you'll be limited and locked out to some features and stuff, which I don't think if you guys are just starting out on HubSpot, like you don't need that yet. Um, you know, once you like fully have integrated it within your business, which doesn't take very long, right? You could get it set up realistically in like a day. I think the hardest part is like getting your actual contacts in there if you don't really have a place for them to live now. If, if they're an area or whatever, you can export them out but, and uh, as a CSV and upload that. But what I will say is like, if you guys have hopes someday of selling your business or something, like it's just not gonna happen without a database with somewhere where somebody could literally come and pick up the business where you left off. And, and maybe that's not your exit strategy, but in your, in your strategies to scale and just keep this as like a, you know, a perpetual revenue source for you, great. Well, somebody's not always gonna know the type of relationship you had with one particular client unless they can go in and see that like for themselves. So. Another great reason why um, we love HubSpot juice. Here we are talking about HubSpot as they send us a $650 bill for this month. But um, it is a good program. And if you do need uh, someone to help get you like squared away when you are ready to pay for it, um, I do love getting into arm wrestling matches. I just got Don and Blaja a nice little deal when they for uh, HubSpot. And like I said, I don't get anything. I just, I, it's these software companies, especially this time of year when they're trying to, you know, pump the numbers towards the end of the year. Like you can get some good software for cheap. So uh, go ahead, Don. Uh, two things. One, the HubSpot thing. Uh, we got our bill today and I was like, holy shit. Uh, Paul really worked a deal for us. So if you're looking to jump into HubSpot, <laughs> get in touch with Paul because he uh, he helped us out. Uh, my I love, I love fighting you, those guys. <laughs> I know you do. And you did, you did a kick-ass job. Um you had mentioned about sending text messages for reviews. Um, we have an open phone, um, and I often struggle with, do we send that from open phone or do I send that from my, like my personal business line um, mm -hmm. that isn't connected to HubSpot? Obviously, open phone is, but I feel like sending it from a personal line could come across as a little bit more personal. What's your thought on that? What, how do you do it? Um, you know what? And and this is the funny thing about Repuso. So while yes, that's, you can basically text them the link. When you automatically send uh, reviews through Repuso by like loading that number up for that client, hitting that send button, it's coming in as like a 265-45 text, sort of like one of those automated texts you get from Xfinity when your bill gets paid, right? So it's the same format. It's not coming from a number. It's like, Hey, uh, you, you know, you can customize that, um, template. I'll show you real quick too, just cause I have it up on my screen. Um, so they're not getting it from like a number to begin with. It's sort it's like, you know, it's sort of like your virtual, um, operator. Uh, can you guys see that? Okay. Let's see if I can zoom in. So yeah, they're getting the text that looks like this. Um, they're getting a, how's your experience with account name is going to be like your R says, how's your experience with fly listed rate us here. Now I can change this to say whatever the heck I want, but um, yeah, realistically um, it's not coming. You can do it. You can literally take that link, right? You can go to that collect link here and text this to people from your open phone or your personal number. Now I don't recommend using your personal number for anything business related, but I think you'll find that this this whole thing that I'm showing you is easier to ignore than like, a, hey, how was your experience, right? You're sort of like starting to feel a little bit more legit, these people. Like sometimes if you go and shop at like some nice store, like, I don't know, just bought some cologne at Sephora. I got a text as soon as I walked out the door, share your experience with us. You know what I mean? And that to me, I just felt like connected as a customer. I'm like, damn, they really know <laughs> like what's going on here. So I don't see an issue with that. You know what I mean? I don't see an issue with using their automated service. I was going to say, um, at, at the end of the day, I think that everyone is conditioned. We got to recognize where everybody's conditioned to. Like, just like Paul said, your internet's probably sending you a, a message from a, a short key 
you know, number. I, I think that people are, are going to get them. Um, and if you, if you're looking at instigating a conversation with them, you know, you might want to do that from your, your open phone. But I think if you're util, utilizing a platform like that, the short key is getting the job done. I know that in our project feedback, 